everyone. Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper. Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again picks up after the original film, with Donna's pregnant daughter, Sophie, renovating a hotel and reuniting all of her mother's old friends and boyfriends. The film also bounces back in time, showing how the beloved characters met and introducing us to Jessica Keenan Wynn, who shines as a young Tanya. She's here today to chat about the film, but first, let's check out a trailer from Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again. I have never felt closer to mom. I'm in the exact same place that she was all those years ago. You're pregnant. Yeah, I am. Tonight, it's a night for celebration. Come on, let's get this show on the road. I was told you couldn't come. I'm a spontaneous person. No, you're not. No, I'm not. <laughs> are my dads. It takes three great men to create such a woman. <laughs> I never did ask you guys, what happened when you met my mother? Here I go again, <laughs> my, my, how can I resist you? <gasps> I don't know what my future holds, but the world is wide. I want to make some memories. There's an island, Calicari. People used to think if you sailed on from there, you'd fall off the edge of the world. That sounds like the place for me. I'm Belle. I'm Donna. He is literally the handsomest man in the world. Except for this guy. What kind of island is this? <laughs> Can I help? Woo! This whole place is incredible. I think we should stay here together. May the rest of our lives be the best of our lives. Just tell me you didn't invite your grandmother. Wicked Witch of the West. I've decided to commit to being a grandmother. Grandma, you weren't invited. That's the best kind of party, little girl. My soulmate may actually be carved. The mine must be wine. All three of us are grandfathers. And that's that. Look what you've done with the place. She wanted to make her mum proud. If she hasn't done that all her life. We can't tell anybody about the baby yet. I just told Bill. Yeah, and I told Harry. I told many, many people. Whoa. You're about to become a great-grandmother. Great-grandmother. I'm living that out of the bio. Everyone put your hands together for Jessica Keenan Wynn. Mama it never Mia. gets old, right? That, the honestly. movie came out on July 20th. So now that you've had like a little time, has it like soaked in even more, kind of being a part of this project? Yes and no. I still I still feel like I won a contest, and I did this film as like you know as 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 a as a ticket winner, but um, I uh, we just had the massive premiere in London, which was insane. We watched the film with three thousand people. We had a blue carpet. It was like a blue red carpet. It was magical. And then I decided to take a vacation. I went to Europe and. I maybe snuck into the movie theater in Copenhagen. <laughs> you just can't get enough. But it was amazing. It was subtitled, and then they had, and they were playing the film. That it wasn't dubbed over, and people were like, I mean, it was joyous. It was really fun. I don't know. It was. I wanted to kind of go incognito and like sit in the back with a baseball hat and glasses. Not that you really recognize me <laughs> with the red hair from the movie, but uh, uh, I, yeah, it's still all kind of sinking in. Yeah. Does anybody recognize you out in public? Because in the movie, you look pretty different. Uh, yeah, I, I've only been back in New York, honestly, like four days since the films come out, because I went to London to do press on the 9th, so I've been away for almost a month, and so now that I'm back, uh, I'm just walking proudly. Maybe maybe I'll cut some bangs <laughs> and do a bob, but no, I, I you know, for the most part, if people recognize me, it's from like, you know, Heathers or Beautiful or like Broadway, um, but I, I don't know, we'll see what this movie brings out. So take me through these premieres because I've seen photos of you guys in LA and London and New York and the premieres just look like so much fun. I mean the cast, that's when you really kind of strikes you how dynamic the cast is. I mean London was the I mean it was 
it was massive on a scale where even people who have been in this business and are very uh, <laughs> uh, high up in this business were like, this is the biggest premiere I've ever been to. That was the first time we were all there together. So Cher and Meryl and, you know, Colin, Stella and Pierce, we were all there and we all did, so we all did the press, the, the press line and then we went upstairs into holding before we had to go up front in the movie theater before when they introduced us. And we did this massive press line right before that and we're all just standing together and they're like, okay, we get a group shot. They're like, now all the guys go out and just have the ladies. And I look to my right, and everyone is left but Cher is standing there. And so I was like, I'm going to go and stand next to Cher in this photo. And I walk up to her, and she's wearing this killer top with just, like, nothing but just jewels. And I was like, you have a nice rack, Cher. Uh, she loved it, but I was like... Let's work on what you say to people that you admire and love. When you meet your <laughs> idols, you have to have a script ready because I would imagine it just goes haywire. Or you fast. just don't, like, your, your mind is moving faster than your mouth, so what ends up happening is you're like, I... <laughs> and then they're like, okay, goodbye. Yeah. That's ha that happened a couple times with Christine, but bless her, she's stuck on I was going to ask, so you play her counterpart. You play the young Tanya. Uh, what was it like the first time you met Christine Baranski? She came and watched us. It, we had five weeks of rehearsal, and we were doing When I Kissed the Teacher, and we, it was the first day that we had all of the graduates, like the 100, 150 ensemble members. And Ole Parker, our director, kind of snuck her in the back, and I saw her walk in, and I was like, oh, no, my hair is unwashed, and I'm wearing these boots, and I don't look cute. Gosh, I have to perform. I have to really bring it. And she... She sat in the back, we all did the number, and then she stood up and gave us a huge standing ovation. And she was like, girls, my only advice to you is to not break an ankle in those boots. And I was like, okay, that's enough. Don't say anything about me, please, I'm not ready. I'm like geeking out so hard at your Christine Baranski impression. I've had time. <laughs> it's really, really stellar. So um, I, I'm not gonna lie, you were one of my favorite parts of this film, just because you guys just embodied each other. Like you, I just really believed the performance. You seemed like a young Tanya. Um, so for you, the preparation going into that, what did, what did that look like? How much did you study Christine's manner? I was lucky. A lot of us were, and Alexa, who played um, young uh, Rosie, Julie Walters' character, we both have admired them for most, for definitely all of my professional life. And I mean, I remember watching The Birdcage and being like, who is that? And seeing Sybil and Adam's family, um, and there was something about Christine that I, as an actress, I always wanted to embody. And so when I booked this role, when I was up for it, I was like, if I don't book this, I'm quitting. <laughs> because I am like, I, I just, I, I admire her, I love her, and I've always kind of taken elements of her and put them on when I've done different roles. And so uh, it was a joy to go back and watch all of her films and TV shows and, and try on different things for size. Um, and she's just, she's just the most dynamic, most loving, magnetic person I've ever met. What was the one thing you did that you were like, okay, I've got this? Was it putting on the wig or was it just the way you said oh, something? Well, or when a hand the movement? wig goes on yeah. and the makeup's on and the red lip and the red nails, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> this is going to be me when I'm unemployed as well. Um, she... Uh, Oh, she, yeah, when, when the clothes went on, the costume, because Tanya's like, she was much more of the fashion forward of the group. Um, in her dorm room, you see she has big posters of David Bowie and all of these different, like, um, perfume bottles and mixtapes and, and tons of bras everywhere. And she, um, I felt like once I put on the costume and put on the wig and everything, it, like, little things start yeah. to come. Like, Annette Benning always said that she, she first found the character when she found their shoes. So I really do believe that the costume does kind of elevate you, kind of it inserts you into your character a bit more. Well, you nailed it. Not like I have to tell you. I've read so many articles. I think Vulture had one that was like, yeah, that the young Christine Baranski is I, Mama Mia too. I'm just going to talk to the wall because I <laughs> still can't get over it. That was insane. That's like an actor's dream is to yeah. just have this like, like God bless young Christine Baranski because knowing like in the state of this world, knowing that there are two Christine Baranskis, like God bless it, change your driver's license yeah. name. The, okay. The other thing I have to say about this film, it is like the most beautiful thing. And I know you guys shot in Croatia. So was it like vacation? Like it sort of seemed really nice and beautiful and... Yeah. Would you hate me if I said yes? <laughs> I mean a little bit, but also that's what it... I mean, how could it yes. not be? So we were... That, that was the one location where we were all... It was adult summer camp. Like we were all there on the island together because the, the the legacy cast, which we wouldn't call them the old cast, the legacy cast, they would be there shooting their scenes and the next day the young cast would do some of their stuff and then we'd all m somehow meet at this one place for dinner because it's one of the only places around. Like it ended up being such a fun um, opportunity for the crew and the cast to all get to know each other. I had like 
two weeks off at some point within those five weeks. So I rented a car and drove by myself throughout Croatia and Istria and Slovenia for like a week. And that was like one of the most magical experiences of my life. And I'm like, I, this movie is a f like, I am here. So I wanted to take advantage of Croatia and see, you know, see the country kind of the ins and outs around the tourism and everything. And like the boat rides and the sunsets That's and just, just like, silly, right? Like it's you, so you're silly. Riding, you're riding a boat back from set and the sun is setting and you're just like, have I peaked? Is this it? Is, and if it is, that's okay. It was, it, yeah, very humbling, very, and, and it just in, incredible, incredible. It was magical. And I'm wondering, like, what was the mood like on set? Because the the young cast is a bunch of young people just hanging out. I mean, was it, it just seemed, again, like summer camp, like really oh, fun. We would, like, we would try to make the crew laugh all the time because we were kind of the comic relief. Like, you know, the, the present day storyline can be a bit sad, you know, it can be, you know, it can trudge along a bit, once Christine and Julie come in, that kind of changes things and share. But in our storyline, we would just, I mean, we could just have a ball. And so, uh, you know, Alexa would love to tell jokes, focus puller jokes, which I'm like, what's a, fo like, this is my first ma major, I'm like, what's a focus puller? Well, someone that focuses the cameras. Okay. And she would just pull out these really bad jokes, but it would make them all laugh. And it was, it truly was a family on set. I mean it. Our DP, Bob Yeoman, who did all of Wes Anderson's movies, obviously, I mean, it's so beautiful, like, you yeah. can tell. He said that this was one of, I'm, I'm putting this on camera. He said that this is one of the best experiences or the best experience he's ever had in making a movie, so. I think that's why it's so fun to watch because right. I would not traditionally be like a musical and film sort of person. I love musicals in person, yeah. but I was like dancing in my seat. I cried a little you bit. You just like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like just release yourself to the experience. Like it's, it's so joyous and there's so much in this world right now that isn't that. Yeah. It's like if you can just go into the theater for two hours, it doesn't matter, you know, like male, female, straight, gay, small, short, tall, whatever. Like you're gonna, you're gonna enjoy it. You're gonna be tapping your toes a bit. Yeah. Um, we we so desperately know we're so thirsty for it. and I even the sound I'll hear like a song come on or like I'll hear the, the a commercial come on and I'll be I'll find myself like I've heard the song so many times yeah. I can't help but like just bob my head and smile. Yeah. I love in my theater uh, when Cher walked out, people started applauding, and I was like, this isn't a live show. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, it, <laughs> I mean the premiere was insane. I think she got she had like a two minute applause, and people were like, can we hear the dialogue? Yeah. Stop. But that was I I mentioned this to you that that was the moment during the premiere when Cher started singing Fernando that I burst into tears. Granted, I had like full makeup done and I was just like Charlie Brown tears shooting out of my face because I had that moment of like, I did that with her. Yeah. I did, I, I mm. <laughs> again, like yeah. that. Uh, yeah, she's so good in this too. She's so, and her storyline was so, uh, it was surprising to me. Like I didn't, I don't, I'm not a good person at connecting dots. I didn't see it coming. So oh, I was like you. so excited. <laughs> I was well, so excited. Good. It was thrilling. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the music, uh, I love this because not only did we get some new ABBA songs, um, but they also did uh, fun ways of like the ones they used in the first movie. So for instance, like Mamma Mia, they started it off very slow and it was like acapella. And I, yeah. how cool is that? Just That was yeah. one of my, when I first heard that, I was super excited about it. And I think Lily does such a good job and she sang it live when we were shooting it. And then that's what they ended up using. Um, and it's just so raw and, and sweet. And it, it takes you from like almost the present day storyline back. And it's like, that's when the movie I think really kicks into overdrive with that number. And that was one of the, God, are you, are you gonna get bored with this? That was the, one of the best numbers to shoot because <laughs> we shot it for two days and it's just the most fun. We are jumping up and down, um, you know, it's all about sisterhood mm -hmm. and female empowerment. And it was, uh, it was, it was we never got exhausted. Yeah. We just ate all the carbs <laughs> to get through it. As you do. As you do. Uh, what was your favorite song in the movie? Okay, well, Fernando. Was it Fernando? Okay, okay Fernando, because I would sing it in the shower. And I crept onto set. I was there for a spray tan because <laughs> I burn. And we had to look like we were in Greece for like a long time. So I was there for a spray tan. We'd just gotten back from Croatia. And I'd gotten a haircut also. So like my hair looked real fierce, but like I had no makeup on and a big baggy sweatshirt because your spray tan's not supposed to touch your clothes. Anyway, this is a lot I of information. I didn't know that. So I decided to creep onto set because I was like Cher singing Fernando today. So I go to set and I see all the crew. We haven't seen them all in a while. This was the first time I met Meryl. Meryl was there and she was like, welcome. And I was like, oh God, you're Meryl Streep. <laughs> and, uh, and then, and then um, Cher started singing and it was like the temperature in the room changed. Like you could hear a pin drop. It was 
it was magic. It was a concert. Mm -hmm. We were getting a concert. And she sounds so good in it. And it's so intimate, like the way that she sings Fernando. So that was my favorite for a while. Now, after seeing the movie a few times, I love Angel Eyes. Yeah. I think it's so fun. Julie Walters and Christine in that number. Christine's leg literally hits her forehead. And Julie's, like, scampering around like a little bunny. Uh, yeah, it changes. Um, speaking of Meryl, the... What is, I don't even <laughs> I know I love this, that you say it yeah. casually, because I do. She's a new actress Meryl. on the scene, Meryl Streep. <laughs> um, <laughs> the last song, the I don't even know what it's called, My Love, My Life. I mean, had oh, never heard that song. Oh, it was just you. like a mess. It was yeah. beautiful. It was a like lot that. of people, a friend of mine who I'd, I had lunch with when I was shooting the film, she was like, will you tell me what songs were in it? And I was like, I actually can't. And she said, she's like, is my love my life in it? And I was like, mm. um, and she was like, okay. And she, when she saw the film, she was like, I can't even believe that. Like, it's just such a beautiful ballad. And um, I mean, and then you put in context with the film and you're just, you're wrecked. So this was your first movie? This was my first, like, big studio, studio film. Movie. Like, I had just shot um, uh, an indie film, which hasn't come out yet, called The Mimic, with Amanda Seyfried's husband, oh, yeah. Thomas Sadowski. Uh, and then this happened a few months later. So, yeah, I had done, like, bits in TV. Like, theater has been my home my whole life, for the most part. So um, I'll take more. <laughs> I'll take all the movies, big studio movies, that Universal wants to give me and other studios. Why was this the right time for you, then, to kind of really embrace the film world I guess you're always kind of waiting for something different a mm -hmm. different medium so I love like theater there's something about the instant gratification of like knowing that you have the audience in your hand or getting that laugh or getting that sniffle or there's something electric and I I'm an adrenaline junkie like I love getting onto stage every night and the thing about that we were lucky with this film you're doing we're not doing Schindler's List too that's ter I've said that so many times and it's just <laughs> awful but like we're doing an upbeat musical comedy we're not doing something that kind of is a, a dirge and so depressing and you know um kind of emotionally exhausting uh, so i did get a bit of the adrenaline rush doing this and um and it was kind of like the same in terms of like a theater family like the cast was so inclusive and we all be and because i was the only american at the young cast coming to london they were like let's all go out like we'll just take you out so we're all very close we have a whatsapp group we text every day it's very sweet you mentioned your theater background. Um, I first heard your name when it came to Beautiful because yeah. you did th three runs. Yeah, yeah, uh, Cynthia I Wheel in three times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was in the show off and on for three and a half years, basically, yeah. which is a long time. Totally. And then you also did the Heather's as well. I did the Heather's. Yes. And I just saw that in London like two weeks ago when I was there and they just closed and they're opening up in the West End, which I'm very excited for them. They have new songs. Yeah. It was a bit, <laughs> it was a bit strange. See, like it's weird when you create something and then you go to watch it and it's been four years. It, like I was telling the director, Andy Fickman, that there were moments in the opening number when I had a physical memory of like having to walk behind the stage in order to get ready for my entrance. Like I started to, it all came back to me like hives, my, my voice. I was like, can I still talk? Like everything was coming back slowly, but it's, uh, I, I, that, I owe that show everything. I mean, people that support me and that are fans of my work, they came from Heather's and like people are still discovering it, which is wild. And aren't they doing, I just heard like they're doing another show here or something. I don't know. I might be making that up. They did a 54 Below thing yeah. not that long ago. I was in London shooting when they did that, where it was kind of like a reunion of sorts-ish, mish. Yeah. Uh, but they're doing, but it's in the West End. They're going from like a small theater in, in London and going to the West End. So it's really, I'm really happy for them. So for you, what is your uh, dream theater role? I mean, there's so many iconic roles. And I feel like now theater is like so robust again. They're bringing back so many things. There's revivals. I mean, so what for you, like growing up was a show that you loved that if they brought it back, you'd be like, yes. I'm, I've never done a Sondheim show, so I've mm. always wanted to do a Sondheim show. I keep saying Into the Woods because can they just revive it again? <laughs> like I would love to be, I, for the longest time I wanted to be the witch, but I think I'd love to be the baker's wife. Like that would just be so fun. And I would, I just, the complexity of his music has always enticed me. Um, or something like original maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, but yeah, Sondheim is definitely, definitely high, 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 high up there. Um, but I'm open to any offers right now. Yeah. <laughs> and you come from this family that's known in the industry, right? We were talking in the back, your great, great grandfather, your great, I mean, your yeah. family, but it's all of these men and you're the first woman in your family to really like woman. bust through. I know. So and I feel, feel like, like it's funny. You will get to places in your life. Like when I did Heather's, I'm like, okay, I feel like I'm walking in their footsteps. And then I did Broadway and I'm like, okay, I feel like I am. This movie, I finally am like, okay. Yeah. 
this will be on airplanes. So like, I think that means that like, I have kind of like, I've succeeded in like, like taking on the name and moving forward with it. Um, yeah, and it's, and I want to keep their legacy alive because, you know, a lot, like my mother's generation, they know who my grandparents are. And like, I'd have to tell people like, okay, my great grandfather played the voice of um, the Mad Hatter in Alice in Wonderland, or he was Uncle Albert and Mary Poppins, like Disney movies that we know and love. That's when people know the references. And um, I got to know them by watching their films. And that's why I am such a fan of old Hollywood movies. And I think that's why I kind of am this like, old Hollywood broad, uh, which basically is my grandmother. I'm just playing my grandmother. Um, and I would I like, that is, that's the, that's the wonderful thing about being in this business and succeeding in a way because I am still carrying on their name, which is the best part of it. I like how you, uh, live with that. Like it's a positive encouraging thing for you instead of something that keeps you from pursuing yeah. Oh, it used art. to be daunting. Okay. <laughs> way back when, where I was like, how will I ever, go that path, and I think I took the path of like musical theater, like none of them could sing. They tried, bless their hearts. I think my grandfather, he did Kiss Me Kate the movie, and he like sings Brush Up Your Shakespeare, and it's like, you know, it's a bit like, <laughs> but like, it's great, it's great. Uh, so I kind of felt like I had a one up there. I was like, okay, I can sing, I can do that. Um, and then comes a musical comedy, <laughs> where you're singing and doing a film, and, and, and I'm a woman, you know, first female, so that, that's really important to really move forward with that. Well, you totally nailed it, so I'm sure that they are very, very proud. You did the family proud, for Thanks, sure. Thanks, girl. Thanks. Tanya is, like, forever my spirit animal I know, in so girl, many she's ways. mine, too. I haven't, shook, I haven't, like, shaken her off yet. She's still... What did she still say? Working. She was like, I visually enjoy you. Like, yeah. I will pick up a guy in a bar yeah. with that one yeah. day. We would have... You, you'll love this story. Oh, I know. <laughs> I also just, like, I mean... Can you say that Christine's first line when she sees Senor Sinfuegos? Oh, yeah, like, <laughs> clean him up. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, wash clean him and I like, wash him, bring him to my tent. But she's like, be still my beating vagina. <laughs> and I died. <laughs> I died. Uh, I feel like I can't use it because it's a little too close to home. But, like, um, I, yeah, the, yeah the, the dialogue is great. And she is, we would, when we were shooting um, scenes, Alexa and I, to get into character, like to feel Rosie and Tanya, we would steal lines from like the first film. So my favorite one was when, uh, when, when Tanya says to Donna, Donna Sheridan, you shady lady. <laughs> <laughs> it kills me, because I'm like, oh, the way that she did that, it's like she's drunk on life. It's very like old Hollywood too, in a way, harkening back yeah. to that. It's like, you yeah. shady lady. It's just, it's very indulgent. <laughs> Well, I think we do have some uh, audience questions. You have the first Yay. one? Oh my gosh, hello. Hi. You are on. <laughs> oh, yeah, I am. Um, how did shooting the uh, musical numbers for film differ from staging something for theater? Well, it's interesting because we had five weeks of rehearsal. Like you have, you know, if you're lucky, like if you're going as into as a replacement in a show, you get like a week and a half. But we had five weeks of rehearsal, so that was great. But then you get onto the set and when we were doing When I Kissed a Teacher, which was the first thing we ever shot, which is like, un, un, like I walked into that, we were shot in Oxford and I walked in and I was like, there were like, not, not I'm exaggerating, there were like, five cameras all over and just lots of people. And I was like, okay, this is terrifying. And also just, I'm just like, squeeze your glutes, girl. Like, keep, keep those boots on and just like walk through it. Don't fall off that stage. The stage was so slippery because they just had like waxed it. And so we got up there and we couldn't do it. And we were like, how? And they, then they, they ended up t sending someone out to find something and they ended up fixing it. But it's little things we were like adjusting to. Like, okay, the camera's coming in here, Jessica. So just go full out and then stop. <laughs> you know, you're, but I love like changing things in the moment. So um, I would think it was kind of the same, except you do it over and over <laughs> and over again. Uh, but in a way, you get to perfect it a bit and do different silly faces throughout. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Next question. Hi. Hi. Okay. First, I love your shoes. <gasps> <laughs> Thank you. They're not mine. I'm going to steal them. They're very cute. <laughs> I saw them and I was like, oh my goodness. But um, my question is, was it difficult for you to do the choreography for the entire movie with the whole cast members, you know, getting it on point? Well, the thing that was difficult about that is you walk in and they're like, wow, Jessica, you're on Broadway you're a dancer, you can do that. And I was like, mm. <laughs> I'm a mover, <laughs> but I can fake it till I make it. Um, so it was, Lily was unbelievable. Like she just kind of like emanates this very, this like sultriness. Like she's just like, you look at her, she's adorable and cute, but she's so sexy. So she, anything she does, I was like, okay, how can I stand out here? I'm not gonna be sexy. I'm not gonna have the best moves. So I'm just gonna open my mouth really big and just have a big smile the whole time. And I did. Um, but it was like, it was, 
the great thing is our choreographer, they really cater to like our pros and cons, so to speak. So um, if something didn't work and it didn't look good on us, he's like, I will never make you guys not look good. And I think he succeeded. But it was, it was like challenging, but it was like a cardio workout, so it was okay. <laughs> it's a lot of dancing in the movie. It was a lot of dancing, yeah. yeah. Dancing Queen is a whole other animal. Like, I wasn't there for that. Like, them jumping off the, sh the, the boats coming oh, in yeah. and doing the, like, somersaults and, like, dancing. That, they shot that for, like, two or three days. I, it was one of the hardest things they've ever done, but it's gorgeous. I mean... I love Colin Firth on that boat. I can't. <laughs> they had such a fight over who was going to be Kate Winslet in that. <laughs> And they're like, obviously, Colin. Colin's like, Colin's like, no, I don't want to do that. I'm like, Stellan can do it. And they're best friends. Like, they're very, very close. So it was adorable, but it's, I know, it's too much. It's so good. Next question. Hi. Hi. Oh, I'm trying to collect myself now. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so um, a lot of my friends and I were all actors or aspiring actors, and we just want to know what would be your advice for people that, are, that just want to do what you do, like starting from the bottom and working your way to the top. Yeah. Uh, it's when I get asked this question, I seem I always am like, should I come up with a different answer this time? Like I said this, but time and time again, for the longest time, I kept trying to be someone else. I was like, I was like, okay, they told me I look like an ingenue, so I'm going to be an ingenue, and I'm like, oh, but I'm not an ingenue, and I'm not this, and I'm not that, and I would try to fit myself in these boxes until finally I was like. I'm going to embrace the things that make me different and that people have told me I need to change. Like, like Jessica, you have to take dance classes. You'll, if you're not a dancer, you're never gonna make it on Broadway. Like you have to, um, you know, you have to get your head voice. Like if you're not, if you can't sing soprano, you're not gonna do it. And I'm like, after a while, I was like, no, I'm gonna go in and whether it's my faults or the things that make me weird and kind of like off-putting, I'm gonna bring that into the room because if anything, that is gonna make people go, oh, that is you. And I didn't realize that that's what I wanted, but you know yourself better than like anyone else. So you bring, you, if you go into the room, that means that someone can trust you and they can be like, I trust that you know exactly who you are and exactly what you're gonna bring to a role. And that takes a lot of, you know, a lot of time off their hands. So I always say embrace the things that make you different because it really, it truly in the end, there is no other you and that's gonna be the thing that defines you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And that's also just good life advice. Isn't it? I'm gonna write a book about it. You should. <laughs> and last question before we go. Hello. Hi. I was wondering if they ever revived Mamma Mia on Broadway, would you consider playing Tanya? Oh my God, if they paid me a million bajillion dollars. Uh, oh, that's a sweet question. I would do a concert version of it. I'm so desperately wanna like do a show with Christine. I'm like, how can I get on the good fight? Or how can we do like a two person show at some venue? Like, like Tanya, young Tanya versus Tanya Tanya. I feel like, can you just talk to her about that? I feel like- Yeah, I'll just like shoot her tech. No number um i do have i do have her agent's number and i recently was like did you see this vulture article will you send it to her she'll be so proud uh but i yeah i mean i would i i would love i feel like i got to i got to like play around in tanya's shoes for a bit but you know maybe it's not the end in some capacity yeah we'll see I'm going to cross my fingers that you and Christine Baranski do something Girl, creatively. That's all I want. I mean, because... Let's just put it out into the universe. I just want to be around her more, <laughs> if that's not creepy enough. Uh, I just want... I want to I want to stand in her light because she truly, I think, is one of the... I think she's one of the best actresses. Like, she embodies... She embo she's a lady. Like, she's a classy, classy lady. And I need, I need a little bit of that in my life. I second that completely. <laughs> uh, well, Jessica, it was really great chatting with you. If you haven't seen Mamma Mia, here we go again. You're crazy, but it is still in theaters, so make sure you go check it out and give it up for Jessica Keenan-Wynn. <laughs> Thanks, guys.